Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is the organized radio amateur. And of course, if you're reading the over the air magazine, you know, you've got a uh, proponent who has uh, come on about junk boxes and that's great. You know, I, I have my junk boxes no, for sure. In fact, that's what gave rise to this program is that uh, I need a, uh, a definite uh, goal to keep myself going. But let, let's uh, jump into this. Okay, eclectic entrepreneur, that's what I call myself and my experience uh, in really in communications, literally and figuratively spans from linotype to terabyte and beyond. And, you know, I started as a radio amateur general, uh, got my general ticket when uh, 1964, I forget how old I was. Well, by that date, it was 13. So I'm pretty sure that's the right year. Uh, did, you know, even before that, I did a lot of shortwave listening, uh, worked as a journalist, uh, freelance magazine writer. I did a three year stint at uh, Miami International Airport as their public information officer. I worked uh, very part time. It was just a kind of a side thing uh, as a flight instructor. Um, I did PR and when I left and I, I actually was self-employed since 1981. So that's when I got into PR from article writing. And then I decided to get an MBA, get legit and be a management consultant, which I did for a while. Uh, I published a book in 2000 called Internet Business Intelligence, How to Build a Big Company System on a Small Company Budget. Uh, I had a talk show for about a year and a half. Uh, the main bulk of my career is 20 plus years doing workshops and seminars that I developed and presented all over the country. And the seminar was fairly specific. It was, uh, or the workshop really evolved from a seminar to a workshop was uh, called internet for investigators. So uh, I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, I did some publishing along with the, uh, uh, the workshops uh, got into podcasting several years ago, uh, documentary video starting in about 19, uh, 2015, et cetera. So I, I like to think of myself as a communications expert, and uh, that's what uh, sort of qualifies me to be your presenter tonight. And thank you very much for the privilege of doing it. Okay, radio amateurs uh, and others... Others, by others, I mean people who uh, play around with radio or tinker with electronics, uh, et cetera. So, you know, the, the field is a little broader than just radio amateurs. But in any case, we acquire useful items, you know, and then we have various ways to employ them. And there's a YouTube video uh, about that ARRL junk box uh, article. I think it was the January issue of uh, On the Air, but in any that's an ARRL magazine, of course. Um, but if you when you get these slides, and I'll be putting them out for distribution, when you get the slides, anything that is blue underlined is a link to something on internet. So. Uh, you know, all of us, I think, no matter what our uh, financial status in life, we all stay alert for opportunities and uh, everybody likes a bargain. Uh, so we purchase discount equipment and many other types of useful items. I think amateur radio is probably one of the only uh, endeavors, you know, non-employment endeavors that have so many types of accessories and items and things. I, I really can't think of anything else. Um, local, regional, and national ham fest, swap meets, tailgate events. Now, really, I think, really, these are a part of the glue that holds amateur radio together. I think nets and the camaraderie of these ham fest, swap meets, et cetera, they present not only buying opportunities, but it's a great get together, a regional get together. And some, especially electronics tinkerers, may want to create an inventory of parts. And I'll explain that briefly uh, a little later on. 
Okay, so what's this all about? What's organizing stuff really boil down to? Well, the goal, as I said before, you know, start out with a goal and that is save time. But for, for me personally, a lot of frustration uh, at not being able to find what I want when I want it. And I can't tell you how many times the proverbial missing keys or the lost wallet has you know, gone into play in my head. So I have come up with a sort of a plan for that. And that's part of the concept that I'll discuss in a minute. But, uh, you know, you want to save money, too, and think about evolving this collection of yours. Uh, cost. Now, there are folks who spare no expense. But then there's other folks who want to spend as little as possible. So there is a wide range of people out there who uh, have an opportunity to organize. And the concepts that I referred to are pretty simple, actually. It boils down to discipline, really. One place always, easy to find and evolving. Those are important concepts that I'm going to talk about throughout the slides. Uh, as far as tools, the basic tools are bags, boxes, and labels, uh, ties, and other organizing units, things like that. But we'll get more specific in a bit. Uh, and there are various ways to use those tools properly and planning. Again, ongoing inventory so you know what you have. Or for those of us uh, who are a bit uh, older, you know, we might be thinking about estate planning and how to uh, transfer this stuff to an heir so that they know what they have when they get it. Okay, guiding principles. Put like kind things together in one place. That really is very important. You know, it's the, it's the little hook uh, where you always put your keys. It's the place where you put your wallet. You know, it you always put it in the same place. And if you have that discipline, you won't lose it because it'll be there unless you really do lose it somewhere. Okay, always put things in the same place and also clear and concise labels on clear boxes or bags. Now, the boxes might be more translucent than they are clear, but you can see what's inside. And that's important to be able to identify something quickly without the frustration of pawing through unlabeled bags, et cetera. And you'll see quite a bit of those uh, in, in the photos that I'm showing. You also, and this is probably doubly important today, outthink rising prices. Uh, prices are going up fairly fast. I mean, who knows? Uh, they could start coming down at any time. But I sort of think that if they do, it'll only be a little bit. And it, and it, you know, history has borne out that prices rise, uh, monetary inflation occurs, and we buy less for the dollar that we had uh, yesterday. Okay, watch for bargains. Uh, and also, consider your food consumption. <laughs> I don't mean go on a diet. But... A lot of the containers today are reusable, and it's really kind of amazing. I'm very pleased to see that. Uh, that's, a, that's really a value added with a food product. If I've got a sturdy container and the food product, then uh, it's a good thing. And I'll illustrate that a little later on. Uh, so you reuse these household and food containers. And again, that's for the person who really doesn't want to spend much money on this whole thing. Uh, and, you know, as opposed to the person that has pretty much is whatever he wants to buy, he or she wants to buy. Okay, a place for everything and everything in its place. By the way, you don't see the bar at the top, do you? That uh, bar with the uh, zoom controls? No, no, we just see the slide. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty disorganized, but in fact, uh, I try to keep things in alphabetical order. And uh, that's an older picture, by the way. Um, I'll go into more depth on my battery strategy in a little bit, but uh, 
you know, I, I bought those shelves at Target uh, at the time several years ago. They were, I think, twenty four ninety five, if you can believe that. I added some shelves uh, so that I could put more boxes in there. Uh, I went over to a discount store we have here called Roses, and I bought those little uh, mini bookcases, really. Uh, they're they're three high, three cubby hole high. And right now I'm looking at two of them on either side of a large monitor. And I went to Lowe's or Home Depot and I bought myself a matching white board that I put on top of those two. And I have a whole bunch of radios and hard drives up there. So, you know, coming up with these new ways to save space is also kind of important. Now, to outthink rising prices, some of the techniques that I use is uh, I constantly scan for useful items while in-store shopping or during in-store shopping. Uh, if it's useful and it's on sale, snap it up because you can't really procrastinate with that stuff. A lot of times it's a clearance. Uh, and I'll show you something a little later on with uh, storage crates that I thought was an unbelievable good buy, and that was recently. Um, use a smartphone to record pictures of items uh, and prices of those items for reference or follow-up. You know, a lot of times you just want to see the image and what it cost and the manufacturer, and you may go home and look it up on the Internet. Uh, and find something better or uh, a better price or whatever. So that's an option too. And think seasonal because honestly, uh, pencil box size boxes are uh, on sale during the school supplies season, just before kids go back to school. And there are a lot of sites out there selling quote surplus electronics, clearance, sale, specials, et cetera. Okay, here's an example. Uh, in the upper left, you've got Staples pencil boxes. That's what they call them. They're, they're pencil boxes. But they are wonderful translucent clamshell containers. $1.49 on sale. And actually, uh, I think they were even less during the school season. But today, the, the bigger picture today is they're $2.49. Uh, about a month ago, I was in Staples again, cruising the aisles, and I do this for exercise too. Uh, and for $2 a piece, I purchased six of those red file crates. Now, just for kicks, while I was putting this presentation together, I went to see how much they would cost online. Now, I'm sure you could probably get them uh, at a lower price elsewhere. I didn't spend a lot of time looking, but there was a seller, probably not a Walmart seller, but a seller on the Walmart side, site selling six for $96, 95, 97. Uh, things like the paint that you see up there. Well, it's not really paint, it's nail polish. And I use it to identify things and to, uh, paint a portion of items that are hard to see in the dark you know my cell phone is the case is black so i put silver paint on the back of it it's actually nail polish so it'll be pretty much permanent uh, at a dollar store i found uh one of these wire winder things and now of course it was in the dollar store with the rope on it but my real goal was to have that winder which sometimes goes for up to six or seven dollars uh, on a specialty site a website as i said plastic bags are sort of a basic item and my storage has also evolved so instead of plastic bags i now have a bigger box much bigger box and there was an intermediate size box by the way um, a little later on i'll propose a budget that one could use to, to get all these organizing items. But uh, sometimes it's better not to just buy a, a, a Ziploc or other brand, uh, regular grocery store type 
reclosable bags because the sizes uh, are very limited and the thickness is very thin. So industrial suppliers have these bags and in quantity, they're very uh, inexpensive. Now, a lot of the label, well, all of the labels you see in the presentation were made with that brother QL570 label maker. That is 20 years old. And the similar model, the current model is the QL600, which is on the left, excuse me, on the opposite side above uh, the, uh, I'm sure you see the picture there. Desktop labeler, I believe that's uh, $79. You might be able to find it for less or more. I don't know. But that's, that's a going price. Uh, it also comes with software, and that software is extremely versatile. In fact, it's a little intimidating. There are so many features available. But you can also see the wide variety of labels that you can get for those label machines. And uh, they come in very handy. Uh, some people may have a use for other uh, size or shape labels, but uh, there's a little something for everybody there. And again, you're going to get these slides. You can look them over in detail. You can use the links, etc. cetera. But um, the labels, as I said, come in various sizes. And I've given you my applications for them on the left. And I have specified the label type on the right. So for example, the pencil box size uh, boxes, the AC adapters, wall warts, those use a small return address label. And on the organizer drawers, and that's a tabletop organizing uh, unit. I will show you one of those in a moment. Uh, that has a very small drawer. And so I use a one inch round label on that. Uh, as far as um, some of the boxes, I use a continuous two and a quarter inch wide uh, paper tape. So here's examples of those. Uh, the gray unit on the left is what I call an organizer unit, uh, probably made to store eight and a half by 11 paper. The boxes are file storage boxes, and I have a couple of different ways of uh, labeling those. Um, when I talked about crates, you'll see uh, the blue crate is one of my crates that I own, but uh, the other crates were recently purchased, the red ones. And the travel items sit there in a, a, an open box so that I can grab whatever I need when I'm going on a trip. Okay, this is something new. I think a lot of people probably aren't familiar with this. I found on the All Electronics website uh, seller, they are now out of business, unfortunately. But these are what I call purse lock style. And the real, uh, the, the term for them is uh, that you can search on is nylon twist lock clips. Uh, and you can see in that upper left corner there, those clips are very, very easy to put on, very easy to take off, uh, very small, compact, inexpensive, and, I, you know, I can only say good things about them. Zip ties are good, but I use them only for long-term storage. And for short-term storage of, you know, bundled items, wire and cable, I use the uh, purpose-built wire organizer uh, Velcro type tapes. Hook and loop is the uh, generic name for that. So nylon twist lock sources, I've given you four of them down there in the, uh, in the bottom with four links. One of the things that I found very frustrating with uh, knockoff uh, products is the knockoffs uh, can curl, they can stick on themselves, etc. cetera. Uh, as far as the shortcomings of uh, zip ties, one of the things you do not want to do is cut into an expensive cable, uh, antenna cable with a knife. So 
uh, you know, it's, it's better to use some kind of a tool that you can be certain you're not going to cut that. So I tend to stay away from, from uh, zip ties, although I do use them quite f- frequently for other things. Um, and knots, you know, there are a variety of ways that you can uh, bundle using rope or hang things using uh, uh, certain types of knots. So that's another avenue to look into, but not in detail uh, on this uh, evening. I take the return address labels and I wrap them around uh, smaller cables so that I can identify them. And you can see there that uh, it works perfectly on the, the wall warts. And then when it comes to very small components, uh, I will gather up a certain kind of component. Uh, I guess you would call that a like kind and put them all in one storage box, which also is labeled. Magnets, they are very attractive for creating storage, pardon the pun. Uh, as you can see, a toolbox lid is wasted space, really, but with magnets, you can put some tools on that wasted space. The other two pictures actually show the side of that. And if I turn in my chair and reach over, I can grab that head, uh, head magnifier, headset magnifier, uh, head mounted magnifier. And uh, so I use a variety of magnets, but Neo Dimimium, I think that's it. Uh, those are the strongest magnets that we can buy, and uh, they're available a little more expensive than your average, you know, round button magnets, but they're worthwhile. So I mentioned the budget. Well, if you were starting out, this is what I would recommend if you wanted to go out and buy all these things at one time, so you have them. However, uh, there may be a way to mitigate the cost. Uh, for example, by buying for a group or having this as a club, an amateur radio club project where uh, the club buys the labeler and the labels and perhaps a thousand of three sizes of plastic bags uh, but you go out and you get your own shoebox containers and your pencil box size containers. Uh, shelving unit is optional. You probably have somewhere around the house that you can store these boxes on. But um, going out and buying a plastic, uh, you know, fairly good, sturdy plastic shelving unit, uh, maybe for the garage uh, or even in your office or whatever, um, you know, is that that's a personal expense, but the total, if you just wanted to buy all this stuff yourself, would be about two hundred and ten dollars. I think it's well worth money if you want to organize stuff. Now, a little bit on zip ties. Remember, I said I use them for other things. Well, uh, some of these colored zip ties uh, identify what's on or help me identify what's on. Uh, these 128 gigabyte uh, SanDisk uh, flash drives. Um, when I was doing a lot of traveling, uh, quite often I was in hotel rooms which weren't entirely uh, well lit. And I had trouble because at that time I was using a lot of black. My, my bags tended to be black just to, you know, so uh, they were sort of inconspicuous. But um, I found that the ties often broke off and sometimes even the zippers broke. Uh, so I would thread a zip tie through there. Okay. And um, so I, I did, did some of these unusual things with zip ties. And by the way, if you ever need a longer zip tie and you don't have one, think about putting two together. They work pretty well that way. Repurposed boxes. These are everyday items. Uh, on the left, you see a uh, Johnson & Johnson first aid kit box. On the right, you see a salad toppings tray. This is a tray that goes inside a larger box that holds the greens. 
and all the fixins for the salad are in that tray and it's all packaged up in the box, the bigger box. So if you clean those out, they make nice little uh, sorting uh, things for your desk. Repackaging, repurposing, taking box, taking small divider boxes like the one that's on the right, purchasing the material that you want to purchase, and then repackaging the material, say, in a larger box with all of your hardware so that you can reuse these plastic boxes. Now, they have risen in price. I mean, if you wanted to go out and buy a nice uh, compartment box these days, you're going to be spending 3 to $5 or more, depending on the size and uh, thickness uh, complexity. But, you know, again, taking all of those connectors and, you know, putting certain ones, like, for instance, there's a male and female connector in there somewhere. I guess they're called flag terminals. And uh, putting those together, I mean, it makes sense. If you're going to use a male, you probably want a female flag terminal to um, use. Uh, the bullet connectors, the male and female part, why not put that together in one small drawer in an organizer unit? That frees up the box so that you can use it for something else. Uh, I bought some fuses for my car, uh, put them in a, in a box that I store in the car anyway, and I reused it as a small box for these uh, nylon twist locks that I was telling you about. I mean, you can go on and on uh, and try to think creatively as well. Uh, you know, look at that husky uh, tool bucket bag, if you could call it a bag. It's an insert for one of the uh, one of the do uh, department store type, you know, retailers like Home Depot or Lowe's. You can buy these buckets and then they have inserts and it makes a nice uh, storage unit for your tools. However... I had actually three of them at one time, and one of them was kind of in storage, and I never did anything with it. So I cut it up into four parts, and I hung one side of it on a storage crate. Okay, um, I found a very good deal on a Walmart uh, tackle box, a fishing tackle box. I think that was $28 for that uh, tackle box there. I bought that and helped my wife organize her sewing supplies, which were in a basket. And when she needed something in the basket, she had to dig through or, you know, turn over and, and throw out all this stuff onto a flat surface, sort through it and find what she needed. Well, now she's got a very nicely organized sewing box, et cetera. Okay. Uh, again, these are items that I found at, flea markets and uh, when I say items I'm talking about the actual storage units like that yellow uh, divider box that's in the bottom photo on the left the blue box had actually it was it had some tools in it and uh, that and the box was you know the, the box and its contents at the um, at the flea market were, uh, I think, three or $3 maybe. So I bought that, cleaned up the tools, uh, cleaned out the box, and there you go. Now, I've talked a lot, you know, I, I referred back to organizer units. Uh, this is a clear picture of what I'm trying to, to convey when I talk about organizer units. So, you know, this is part of an accumulating inventory of uh, stuff that you would want to get either buy outright or find. And uh, I mean, I can imagine going to a uh, swap meet or a tailgate and finding somebody's old box storage organizer, like that 42 compartment organizer with a bunch of odds and ends electronic parts in it. And somebody's just trying to get rid of it for 10 bucks. Well, depending on its condition, I might buy that and reuse it after cleaning. And a lot of times items like shrink tubing that I bought on Amazon 
you know, you can put that in plastic bags and uh, reuse the box. So a lot of this stuff doesn't have to cost an enormous amount of money. Okay, I mentioned a battery strategy. Well, here I have um, the original gray box that came out of a toolbox. In other words, there was a tool, actually, I think it was a bag, a tool bag with tools and this box. So I gave the tools and the bag to my friend, took the uh, gray box for myself, and there you go. Um, and now it's evolved. So I have a little, I have a specific shelf, and it went from the gray box to a small storage unit. And there's a lamp underneath there, an LED lamp. By the way, I don't throw away used batteries when, when it runs down in you know, a digital clock or something. If it's above 1.45 volts, I save it. And I can run these small uh, LED lights for a considerable amount of time on batteries that actually run down to about one volt. And I've never had them leak. So that's a good thing. There's always a first time. Here's another example. This is something that probably happens to all of us. You know, over time, we get cables. Uh, you know, they come with things that we buy. We buy extension cables. We buy a special cable for some purpose. Uh, but over 25 years, my USB cable collection has grown to this. And this is how I store it now. Okay, we talked about creating and using an inventory. Uh, I have mentioned to some of the Rat Pack management folk uh, that I have another slide presentation on managing information, uh, mainly managing computer information, stuff that you would have on your computer. Uh, so we'll talk about presenting that, but this sort of segues into that kind of a topic. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on it tonight, but what you can do is copy and paste either from a PDF receipt or from your shopping cart on the web. You can paste that information either to, if, if it's uh, formatted correctly, you can paste it right into a spreadsheet. Uh, rearrange the data and you get the same columns for every item when you have, buy it from different sources. You'll buy things from different sources. They'll have different ways of presenting the information, et cetera. But you can bake, break it down to maybe uh, four or five columns. You know, the type, uh, the price, the quantity you paid, the, the date you got it, and how many you have, uh, et cetera. So taking that information electronically from shopping carts or PDF files, uh, receipts, et cetera, converting it into a spreadsheet and arranging the data into columns so that you can save this information as a master spreadsheet or what I would call permanent inventory. Uh, and of course, you would remove items from the inventory when you use them. So uh, that's about it for tonight. That's uh, you know, instead of giving you, well, you know, here were the goals of my presentation and this is what you, you've learned, just get out there and do it. And once again, it takes discipline and you'll be good at organizing. I hope this presentation has given you a little more, uh, you know, emphasis on organizing or maybe that motivation to really start to organize things. Or if you're an expert and you've got other things that you use, please send them, send me some suggestions because this is an ongoing thing for me. So thank you very much. And I thank the uh, Rat Pack folk and I thank you for watching. <clears throat> okay. Do you want to uh, remove your desktop now? It's a red button at the top of your screen now. <clears throat> There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Okay, Marty, go ahead. You got your hand up.
Hey, uh, thank you. And uh, David, uh, sorry, I was a little late. <laughs> a computer was uh, giving me trouble, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, I uh, David just shared with me the, uh, you know, kind of the draft of the thing before he did it. And I, my, when I first heard about this, my immediate reaction was, man, I would need this, sign him up. <laughs> and, and I do. Uh, and I use some of the things you've described, but you've given us a lot of good ideas. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Scott, you want to come on? Hey, uh, <clears throat> thanks, David. Good presentation. A couple ideas that um, that I can tell you from years of deploying to disasters. Um, your cable ties that you use around your cords, you, the nylon twists. Um, I got one better. Um, hair, hair ties, elastic hair ties that you can buy in the beauty section of a of any store for like nine of them or ten of them for a couple dollars. They're phenomenal for holding cables together. And then on your zippers, uh, where you used uh, brightly colored zip ties, I use glow in the dark parachute cord. Um, That's because, a great idea. Because a lot of times when I deploy, I need to get into a bag and I don't want to turn a light on. My uh, my pull cords on my zippers glow. And Excellent. so that way it makes it real convenient. Excellent. That's a great, those are great suggestions. Thank you. I've written them down on a notepad. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Gee. You're welcome. Gee, go ahead. Yes, great, uh, great presentation. Um, the only thing I can add to it is I just bumped on everything that you mentioned, except for uh, the labeling, with the labels. Uh, I have tagged some of my cables with them, but after a while, uh, the adhesive just like, breaks down and the label just falls off just by looking at it almost. Uh, number two, um, on those uh, bags of uh, bread that you get in like the uh, supermarket, not the twist tie ones, but they have an enclosure. It looks like a little uh, tag with a little uh, opening on it that you, you, when you tie up the bag of uh, bread, slip that on it and keeps it closed somewhat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, excellent. What I, what, what, what I do is I, I take them, and let's say it's a power cord, depending upon the thickness of it, of course, is I'll take uh, two of the same color, write down with a, a fine uh, permanent marker what it goes to, what one end goes to where, and what the other one goes to would be a power supply or, or whatever. I can do the same thing with other tables too. Now, so what like, are you writing on? Desk. What's that? What What are you writing on? Okay, there are these little tags. I, I'm not able to like show you what they look like. Um, They're square things, and they have a cutout, and you push them on the twisted bread. Exactly. Bag. That's that's bread, it. Bread bag yeah. clip. <laughs> yep. And you know they're not very big. Probably a little bit bigger than a post stamp. Well, about the same size, but the key thing is to have a fine permanent magic marker so that you can mark more specifically what it is. But I want, I try to have the same color on each end of whether that cable or wire or whatever the uh, component is. You know, that's excellent. And uh, I'm not a tree hugger, but I'll tell you what, if I can reuse something, I'm going to keep it. And I have a lot of stuff that I've kept. Oh, no, no, I understand. Uh, I, I just started within the past six months saving these things. And it's it helps a bit. Yeah, sure. Especially when you have to go underneath your uh, desk or work area and uh, looking for what, what cable is going to what. Uh, just makes it a little bit uh, less headache-wise trying Gee, to now, uh, uh, what you're plugging in. Have you ever seen a glow in the dark one of these? I'll buy that. I mean, I'll just go to the manufacturer and no. ask for something. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't seen them. <laughs> okay. Great suggestions. Yeah, thanks, okay, Steve. Thank you. Victor, you're on the side, but you got your hand on, on the picture, you. but you got your hand on the muted. All, All right. I'll save. Go ahead, Victor. Two zero two three. Good evening. And, uh, hold on three, just a second. Word. I've got another distraction going on here. Um, uh, 
one of the things for me that has worked really well for years, I've worked with the uh, mechanical pencils. I just like them better, and uh, you don't have a lot of uh, pencil shavings around to blow up in the dust. But for years, I used a uh, a 0.5 millimeter lead. And recently, with a lot of paperwork I've been doing related to ACS, emergency management, I've realized that the 0.5 doesn't scan that well because it's so fine that I've graduated to a 0.9. I think everybody should consider that if they're scanning and copying documents is that the larger lead will be a better a better source for uh, duplication. Hmm. Another what point bra what brand point. what brand of mechanical pencil do you usually use or do you have? My my uh, 09 is a Bic. Bic. Okay. And the last one I came up with was like a five pack <clears throat> or a six pack with multicolor. So I was trying to do it color coded, red for my fire department stuff, blue for this, black for that. That one by the wayside when I lost one of them, and so I just grab one now. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. I like that. In fact, uh, most pencils drive me crazy. So what I did was I invested in a bunch of these very dark uh, drawing pencils. They're Faber-Castell uh, number... I don't know. It says one equal two B. So I'm not sure what that means, but they're darker than average. Right. And I've got one more suggestion that I'd like to throw out because this is very important. I discovered this when I was doing that control. I couldn't write fast enough to write down the names, call signs, location, comment, etc. So what I did was I experimented. I bought these uniball uh vision elite and the thick the thick line there's a couple of them there's at least two one is thin and the other is a little thicker and the gray uh exterior of the pen uh indicates that it's the thicker one uh but this uniball vision elite it will write as fast as your hand can move it does no drag whatsoever i love it you know, that sounds terrific. I should try that myself with my uh, vision loss. The other one for me, I'm lousy at backing up my data. And I've got a backup drive that turned up missing. Then my data cable was missing and the power cable was missing. Well, I found the backup. I found the other cable, the data cable. And then I found the power cable and lashed them together. What happened is I forgot that I lost the data cable to the power cable. So I spent four hours looking for the data cable. <laughs> um, can't win. <laughs> you can't win. But for me, the storage issue, and I've labeled the bags with all the other cables I found. I said, oh, this is the phone cable. This is the printer cable. Bag everything up so I know what it is. And if my habits continue, it'll work for about two weeks and I'll start forgetting to put things in bags and I'll be back to a scatter of cables all over all over the place. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Marty, you've had your hand up a couple of times here. You want to talk? Uh, yeah, I got a couple of things. Um, the good ideas, everybody. Uh, first, um, when you have a lot of similar cables, uh, you know, uh, I, sometimes yes i will label like you know power cable uh, as to what what it goes to because they all end up with red and black at a power pole on the end uh but for example i have a bunch of radios with same microphone so i use uh, you know i have a, a supply of the good uh, 3m um tape and all the rainbow colors so you can color code coaxes outside and stuff well i found that uh by doing the same thing on the radios you know the uh, two meters um uh, you know, red is red is two in the color code. So the end that goes onto the radio and the end of the that goes up to the microphone, I have wrapped with the same color tape. So I I know which mic I'm grabbing. Finally, uh, that helps. Also, I do a you know, I've done a fair amount of overseas travel with uh, for radio with expeditions and contests and stuff, and um, the 
uh, a lot of the anything that runs off a wall wart, you know, you can get a physical adapter to the the local plug, but it's usually 220 volts when you're going overseas. And so I've I've taken to uh, putting a particular label on anything that is 110 only. The generic, you know, gen generally now they're all uh, switching supplies, and they can take you know 100 to 240 volts. Some of them can't, and if they can't. I make sure I mark that so that I don't plug it in and blow it up by mistake. Yeah, that's great. That's a that's a good uh, application right there, and it just it just drives home the importance of not squinting in the dark, trying to make out that little imprint in the black plastic. You know. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and this way you don't have to squint. Um, also, the you know you mentioned the uh, Ziploc uh, freezer bags. The, those quart size freezer bags are very handy for uh, cables and so on. Where again, I'm traveling, I have stuff in a suitcase. I don't want to get them tangled up. And and by grabbing, you know, okay, here's the my uh, here's my adapter to put my my computer to the radio and so on. And I always keep it in there so that when I do travel, I know exactly what I have and where it is. And it makes it so much easier getting it in and out of the suitcase. Excellent. Yeah, those are those are great ideas. I'm I'm uh, jotting down notes, uh, and uh, who knows? I mean, it may show up in one of these presentations. Version four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But by the way, uh, that reminded me. Um, of course, the three M tape, you know, is going to work right. The uh, adhesive is not going to come off on everything. Uh, but uh, just to mention, when I just an idea about these surplus things. Uh, when all electronics was in business, they were selling, uh, towards the end, it was a lot of clearance stuff, which their good prices were even better. But they sold rolls of, uh, uh, like you said, plastic electric tape, and uh, they were in all different colors. And so I bought, uh, I don't know, two of each color, about four or five different colors. Uh, and I've got red, white, black, brown, you know, things like that. But yeah, that's a great idea putting the on the ends of the uh, the cable connectors somebody in chat just mentioned uh, getting the silver sharpies oh and those things show up on you know you have a black box it it it, it makes it very visible um and some i remember in a qst many many years ago Somebody talked about, you know, putting batteries into a device and it's dark and you can't see which way the battery goes. They used a kind of a glow, a highly reflective white nail polish, much like you're you know, used for your paints <laughs> uh, on the positive ends uh, in the device. So you can always see which end the battery goes in without having to, you know, having to look for that little embossed same color plus or minus. Yeah. You know, I got a quick little story to tell about uh, buttons and and uh, uh, and and the nail polish type uh, little tiny little marker. You know, I wanted to do that on my 7300 and I just happened to discuss it with my wife. And the 7300 has three buttons on the left. One, I believe, is the power. The next one is transmit. And the third one is tune. And. I was, for some reason, always mistaking the tune button and I pressed the transmit button. And so I'd sit there and I'd say, what's going on here? Uh, whoa, wait a minute. We've got a good suggestion here. So anyway, instead of putting the paint on, I, I happened to find coincidentally, and I want to see that Fry's electronics thing, uh, but I happened to find these tiny little round uh, labels. In fact, they're right here. If I can grab it real quick, I might be able to. Uh... These are Avery color coding labels, and they came in a bunch of different sizes, but they have some that are like, oh, maybe a quarter inch or smaller round. And I just put one orange one right next to the tune button. So now I don't make a mistake. What was that fry suggestion that popped up? That was in chat. Uh, it says, when Fry's went out of business, I bought pink electrical tape at 25 cents to mark the rope or weights used to put antenna ropes into the trees for visibility. Excellent. Yeah. 
that's a great idea. Are they, they I guess none of them are uh, still around, right? The fry stores are all uh, defunct. As far as I know. Mm, shame. Yeah, a real big shame. Steve? Probably available on Amazon somewhere. That's true. Yeah. Where is Gerber Radio Supply? It was in Boston. Oh, okay. You're a KB6, but uh, you're in Boston? No. I was in Boston. I'm KB1. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> okay, Gene, you got your hand up, sir? Uh, yes, I do. Say uh, hi again, everybody. Uh, in case I confused anybody earlier, hopefully I'll hold this up to the camera so that you can see what I'm talking about by those ties. Uh, you find them on just about any product in where the bread aisle is. They're wrapped around packages of bread, uh, English muffins, bagels, you name it. That's just one color. And this one just happens to uh, not have any writing on any side. So it's a good size, the right size uh, uh, permanent marker. It would be easy to write something on. I got also, you. also um, I use myself. Uh, multicolor pipe cleaners ah. that I use to, and I can reuse them over and over again based upon the purpose. And uh, I'll use them to identify various cables too. If I'm like wrapping like a, a big stretch of uh, coax, you know, I'll just like put a couple of them around it and that uh, helps keep them together. Goodbye, Dan. Thanks for attending. I'm sorry, what? Dan just another signed Dan. off. There was a, another Dan. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. There are more Dans here. <laughs> there was a Dan from Wisconsin made an absolutely fantastic comment in chat uh, that he was Velcro in his data center to manage coax and fiber so you can untie it easy and, and, and move them around. But yes. The labeling on the cable, he takes drinking straws, cut to one and a quarter of an inch and places the label on the straw. This way he can rotate the stick and rotate the straws to see what was what's on the label. And I think that's a fantastic idea. When that's you have lots excellent. And lots and lots of cables to try to find out because you can't write on the table, but you can put the label on a straw and it's very easy to be able to see what it is. You know, I have a box with, uh, it just says, I'm looking at it right now. It just says tubing. But in that box, I probably got about 15 different straws that I've saved from various places. <laughs> I don't like to mm -hmm. use straws, so they're clean yeah. anyway. <laughs> and also Paul from Oregon says uh, to get rid of the compartment organizers if you live in an earthquake prone area, because when the earthquake hits, everything is going to be all over the floor. But he said to get some Plano boxes, like from the fishing dial, and put two in a zip bag. This way, if it gets tipped over or something, Everything is together. You can reorganize stuff afterwards. Oh, so wait a minute. You're saying a big enough plastic bag to fit one of these Plano uh, plastic yeah. boxes? You can get oh. a gallon size or a fourth or a gallon size should fit. And they do make bigger ones. They huh. make like, especially if you live in earthquake areas. Good thought. Okay. About all of all of everything in the chat. Anybody, okay, uh, Paul, go ahead. Get your hand up. ISA. Yes, I I do not use a, a Ziploc bag for those little fishing containers. What I get is um, somebody brought to a meeting one time some zippered um, bags, like out of Cordura. Like banker bags? Uh, well, they're, they're, they were red, Cordura, you know, probably like 12 by 16 with a zipper through two areas. And I've run out of those, so I'm going to have to sew up some more of my own. Don't be afraid to get out the sewing machine. Yeah, I've often thought that I would love to sew and especially to fix some things. But uh, that idea is great. However, it does illustrate the business about the budget you know some folks can afford five or six dollars per bag others no 
So that, but that's an excellent idea. I mean, I like that, but uh, I wouldn't do it personally, but it is a good idea. Thank you. The initial were free. Oh, what are they samples that this person gave out? Uh, sometimes when people come to a ham radio meeting, they'll bring something to get surplus from their work. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Also, well, when you're writing stuff on labels in the field during an emergency or something, or like a de-exposition, pencil stuff is not waterproof. Pencil stuff will wash off. You want to try to get waterproof ink at all, all possible to write on the labels. Because once you get wet and you can't read your labels anymore, they use it. So waterproof ink on waterproof labels, the plastic labels, the straws and stuff, is a good idea. Waterproof ink. Hmm. I've never really looked for that. Uh, have, have you seen it? Where? Yes, all over the place. Really? Okay. Well, they have to remember he lives in Florida. Most uh, of the sharpies, most of the sharpies are permanent ink, like laundry markers and so on. Oh yeah. Okay. When they say permanent, I guess they mean it, huh? <laughs> yep. Well, okay, Victor, you got your hand up again. Unmute. Currently muted. All plus A. Thank you. Um, we talk about being prepared. I think food is a critical issue. We should always have food. I've been reading an article the last couple of days about <clears throat> not storing food in plastics because the plastics will uh, put off the, all the poly poisons that are used in manufacturing. And, you know, and I can understand it. I use a lot of my food within 30 days, so I don't think I have a problem there. I'm not sure about things like Quaker snack bars that are in, wrapped in foil, if that protects them enough to keep them uh, po uh, poison from leaching into them or giving them a bad flavor. I don't know if anybody here got any experience with that. Uh, when we start talking about six months or six years storage time for some food items. Any thoughts? And with that, have a wonderful evening, everybody. We'll catch you tomorrow night. Thank you. Okay, Marty, you had your hand up. Marty, you're muted. Oh, I, there we go. Muted again. Okay, if a food has that long a shelf life, it's probably something you shouldn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tw twi tw Twinkies will last for years, but you don't. know, I had DuPont uh, as a client for a while when I was in Wilmington, Delaware. And, uh, you know, I, I have a great deal of respect for chemistry. Uh, they came up with some very interesting items. In fact, uh, I know the story about nylon, uh, not nylon, Kevlar, as I did some work for the Kevlar marketing group. But the uh, Kevlar was discovered by a woman scientist who came up with some glop and she didn't know what to do with it. It was just some kind of mystery chemical that she happened to mix up, I guess. And she decided, well, listen, let me uh, try extruding this. She did. Of course, they have access to all kinds of things. And they extruded it and made it into fibers. And when they tested it, you know, that's what they got. So uh, she's the inventor of, uh, uh, by chance, of Kevlar. Uh, but I, I'll tell you the truth. A lot of these packaging items, you know, what we're talking about, uh, those foil packaging items are really made to be completely air resistant. I mean, not resistant air, you know, air, uh, am I saying it right? Air proof? Air tight. Airtight. Airtight, yeah. And uh, not only that, but they're made with the coatings that store the uh, help store the food. And I, I, you know, I would trust whatever I, maybe I'm naive, but I would, if it says two years shelf life, and it's in one of these uh, sort of foil plastic things. Uh, I would definitely just trust the manufacturer. But, you know, you might be right. Who knows? Okay. Barry, how are we doing in chat? Are we pretty well caught up there? We're caught up in chat. Uh, 
Dave said Twinkies and Ding Dogs. Those will last forever. <laughs> <laughs> they also last forever in your belly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. If you sew, wait a minute. If you sew zippers, bag, uh, Joanne's, I, it just disappeared on me. Let me see. Joanne sews can... zippers and bulk rolls. Oh. Zippers are on sale, or you can buy zippers by the yard and then cut them down to size. Oh, okay. Hey, is there a way to save all of these chat uh, texts? Yes, it's all. Oh, yeah, you'll get a copy of it. Excellent. Excellent. You know what I might do? I might take all of these suggestions and put them on one slide and say all suggestions came from a Rat Pack video conference. Okay. <laughs> One more. Thing. I got to go back and find this uh, comment. Where was that? Yeah, do do share away. Dave. We all we all learn from one another. Ray Paul. Oh, Dave also said nothing beats no, a sorry, that, I, was, yet. I was just trying to do a thumbs up. Who's okay. Paul? Uh, oh, okay. Thank you, Paul. Dave. D Dave said. There's nothing beats a 40 cubic yard bin in the driveway to make more room for all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Our neighbors wouldn't like that. <laughs> Dave, what you're holding up? Is that a, a nut container or something? Yeah, it's a, it's a, a, a trail mix container. And these things are ha really handy. Because they got a nice screw cap on them, and they're a square shape. You can you can stack them side by side or on top of each other, and full full of your whatever you want to fill them with. I like <laughs> that. I like that a lot. It's octagonal, or no? It's okay. I see. It's got a handle built in. Yes. Now the, the first thing is you got to do is you got to buy that stuff. Then you got to eat that stuff. Then you got the container. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, I had, I don't have any problems eating it. I don't know how many uh, protein powder, large, well, when they used to sell it in five pound containers, nowadays, I think the yeah. largest you get is two, but uh, I still save some of those. So uh, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, we're a little over the hour, but that's okay. It's been a great presentation. We appreciate you coming on and doing this. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dave, thanks very much. You're welcome, and thank you for the opportunity. Not a problem. Keep in touch. I will. Another one.